Concentration is defined as singleness of mind, which gives rise to a question. When you see the factors of the first jhana, there are five. It looks like you have five pots on the stove that you have to take care of all at once. So how can you be single in your mind? But look carefully at those five factors. Two of them are results of the other three. In other words, you do the directed thought evaluation in one object, but you don't have to do the rapture or do the pleasure. The rapture and pleasure come as a result of what you're doing with the others. And as for the others, they're all centered on one thing. You direct your thoughts to the breath, you evaluate the breath, and you don't think about anything else. That's the oneness or singleness of the mind. And John Lee's image is of a post. You hold on to the post and you spin around the post. And as long as you stay focused on, on the post and hold on tight, you don't get dizzy. You don't lose your, your balance. It's simply you've got two activities centered around one object. And the activities are an essential part of getting the mind to even deeper states of oneness, more solid states of oneness. Sometimes you hear them described as a wavering or a wobbling of the mind. It's not quite there yet. But if it is a wavering and a wobbling, it's wavering and wobbling with a purpose of getting things to fit together snugly. It's the work you do to put things together and make them right. To use another analogy, it's like making a chair or a chest of drawers. You sand the pieces of wood properly, you cut them properly, so that they're snug. If they're not quite snug, you sand them again until they're just right, and then you can really settle in. So in this case, the director thought to the breath, keep reminding yourself to stay with the breath. The evaluation is to make sure that the breath is a good place to stay. It's just right for the body, just right for the mind. If it's not comfortable, you figure out what could be done to make it more comfortable. That's part of the evaluation. And then when it is comfortable, the evaluation goes further. How do you maintain it? Once you can maintain it, how do you let it spread? Because after all, the Buddha says you want the sense of pleasure and rapture to spread throughout the whole body. And how do you do that? We think of the breath energy going down the spine, out the legs, down the nerves of the shoulders and the arms, through the, all the muscles of the body. Do you have a sense of the breath filling the body, a sense of ease filling the body, your awareness filling the body? When they all cover the same territory like that, that's when you really get a sense of oneness. And that large sense of oneness, that's what intensifies the pleasure, intensifies the rapture, and allows you to go deeper into concentration. You can put the directed thought and evaluation aside. To go back to the image of the pot on the stove, it is just one pot, and you're hovering around it tasting what's in the pot. If it's not quite right, then you figure out, does it need more salt, less salt? What needs to be added? Does the fire need to be turned up, turned down? Until everything's just right. Then you can eat whatever you have in the pot. You don't have to worry about adding extra salt. You don't have to think in those terms anymore. You just enjoy what you've got. That's getting the mind into the second jhana, where there's a sense of being one with the breath. The awareness and the breath and the body all seem to be one. Try to maintain that. Sometimes the question will come up, well, what's next? Well, what's next is maintaining. Because you're working on a skill here. You're not checking off the jhana boxes. 
you want to learn what you can see as you get the mind really, really still. And among the first things you'll see are thoughts of impatience. You have to recognize those for what they are. They are defilements at the moment, because there's a stage where you want to get to trust the sense of oneness, be content with the oneness. So you can pick off the other little thoughts that would pull you away. That's where you're developing a sense of ease, a comfortable dwelling in the present. You're developing a mindfulness and alertness to maintain this. And you are beginning to see the little defilements that would eat away at your concentration. You're not at a point where you can do away with them, but you do get a sense of having a comfortable place where you can step back to step out of them. And that's a necessary part of the practice, is having this place where you can step out. You've got something better than to think about greed or think about aversion or delusion, or to look for the pleasures that they have to offer. You've got something more solid and reliable here. So contend yourself with the oneness. Get so that you're really good at this. You know your spot. You know the comfortable breath. And you learn how to deal with whatever defilements are going to come along and try to destroy this. Now, as it gets easier, then comes the next part where you're not content with what you got. You ask yourself, is there something deeper than this? After all, there are the many levels of jhana. And whether your concentration fits into jhana yet or not, that's not the issue. The issue is, can you see when you've settled in and feel secure and feel solidly here, if there's anything in the concentration itself that is still a disturbance? After all, the direct the thought and the evaluation, they're necessary at the beginning, but after all, they do become a disturbance. A sense of rapture and refreshment, the energy that courses through the bodies at times. Sometimes that is refreshing to begin with, feels really good, feels really satisfying. But then after a while that becomes a disturbance. And you want to see what you can do to tune in to a level of stillness that's even greater. Where everything is really one, really still. To the point where even breathing seems to be a chore. You'd be perfectly happy just to sit, filled with breath energy, but with no felt need to breathe in or breathe out. Now sometimes you get there simply settling in without thinking too much about it. But other times you do have to actively question. This is where the phase of discontent comes in. Some people say, well, I've read that you can gain awakening simply from the first jhana, so that's going to be plenty enough for me. You can't ordain ahead of time which level of jhana is going to be enough for you. You can't say, the higher levels are going to be superfluous, why bother with them? I'll just hang out here. Because it requires a lot of discernment in order to gain awakening from the first jhana. Sometimes you need a lot more quiet in the mind in order to gain the kind of insight that would be radical. So in John Lee's image, you work on getting still, being content with the stillness. And then you develop some discontent. It's like walking. You lean to the right, you lean to the left, then you lean to the right again, then to the left again. As you settle in, and then question what you've got as you settle in, and then settle in again. And in that rhythm, you're going to see a lot. 
because everything you need for awakening is right here. You've got bodily fabrication, the breath, verbal fabrication, directed thought and evaluation, the way you talk to yourself, and the mental fabrication, feelings and perceptions. They're all right here. There's no other place you have to look. You're simply looking really carefully right here. And knowing when to look carefully and when to really settle in and aim simply at stillness. And get a sense of the rhythms of the mind.